therefore, I say unto you. Now, who just said that? Mark eleven twenty four. 24. Jesus. So put it in the first person. Therefore, he said unto me, whatsoever thing you desire, I desire to be totally cleansed of what I just fouled up and did. But the devil keeps coming back and says, yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. No. Isaiah 43, 25 again. I, even I, am he that blotteth out your transgressions for my sake. And here again, I said, your sake? Yeah. I said, you mean for my sake? No. He said, for my sake. And like I said, this is when he said, you want to remember something bad about your children? I said, no, of course not. He said, I don't remember things bad about my children. And he said, if you quit bringing them up. Now, Now, let me tell you something about this. All the crying, all the squalling and bawling and begging will do zero about the sin in your life. But I'm so sorry for it. I know it. But get over it. If you were raised in the house with Gloria Copeland, you would understand that statement. (laughs) What you pointing at, Lynn? You know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. Boy, Gloria, tell the kids, get a grip. (laughs) Get over it. What's she saying? You're crying about something that's already been fixed. That's right. See, all this time, 75, 80 years, you could condemn yourself and beat your sorry self over the head, but I'm so sorry. I'm so unworthy. God knows it. I know it. You know it. Shut up. (laughs) But you are no longer unworthy. I know I, I, I slapped some of you across the jaws in particularly if you've never heard any of this and you're, you're used to crying and squalling and bawling about your unworthiness. No, you were unworthy. Why well, nobody worthy for this? Come on, people. <laughs> if unworthiness would have kept... <laughs> oh, you know, he just, I'm just unworthy. I'm just I'm no good. Well, get saved. <laughs> The old guy was unworthy, no good, and worthless. And Jesus went to the cross for you anyway. That's right. Amen. Well, you know, I I was raised in a good Southern Baptist home, and we came just as I am, without one plea. What a great song. But he didn't leave you that way. Ain't it wonderful? We were there. We we already been there at least once this week. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, any man, new creature. And you go right down to the last verse of that sentence and said, he who knew no sin was made to be sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Amen. I'm telling you. Amen. Amen. You were every born again child of God. The moment you got saved, I'm going to tell you, well, I'm, I'm fixing to kick your religious props out from under you again. 
you're as righteous as you're ever going to get. Yes, sir. Ah! <laughs> you were made the righteousness of God in him. Now, righteousness and holiness are two different things. You can develop in righteousness. That's great. Become more righteous minded. Righteousness is your breastplate. breastplate. But you don't go around saying, oh, if I could only get righteous. Come on, sweetheart. Jesus made you his righteousness. Let me ask you something. Did you ever commit any righteousness? No. <laughs> Did he ever commit any sin? No. no. He was made to be sin with your and my sin so that we could be made his righteousness with his righteousness. If that don't, if that don't set you on fire, your wood's wet, brother. <laughs> Hallelujah. No, I'm not righteous. Now, wait a minute. Er, hold it. Back up. <laughs> I'm the righteousness of God in Him. We're in Him. Aside from Him, we can do nothing. What did He say when He was on the earth? The Son can do nothing in Himself. Oh, can you see this? Oh, yeah. yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've been born again, sweetheart. You're not the old you. Old things passed away, and behold, all things became new. Now, we have to know that, receive that, think that, and that will cause faith to come. Righteousness is by faith according to the fifth chapter of the book of Romans, through one man's sin, one man's disobedience, all. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> Turn over there. Romans chapter 5. Mm-mm. 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 I love this. Glory to God. Romans chapter 5, verse 17. If by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive, say receive, receive, receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Now God said, I blotted out your transgressions. Now you put me in remembrance. Sir, yes sir, by Adam's fall, death came. But thank God Jesus came and I received the gift of God, Jesus of Nazareth, and he, I received his right standing with you. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> yeah, that's what I want to remember. That's what I want him to remember. Well, look at the, look at the, verse 19. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Amen. Yeah, okay. Let's go over to the third chapter of Romans. We looked at that last week. I mean the twelfth chapter. Let's look at that right quick because there's something there. In verse 3. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according 
as God, and, and, and I'm going I'm to paraphrase this right here so you get the impact of it. Not to think more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to you the measure of faith. Well, not to think more highly than he ought to think. Then say you're supposed to think low of yourself. According that God has given you the measure of faith. That measure of faith is what got you born again. That measure of faith get, made you the new creature you are. That measure of faith, by faith, you were made the righteousness of God. You didn't know you was even going to get righteousness in the deal, most likely. I didn't. I got born again, didn't even know it. Oh, I knew I got born again, but I didn't know nothing about righteousness. It was five years before I found out I've been made the righteousness of God. Well, how am I supposed to think? I'm supposed to think that way. I'm supposed to become the righteousness of God inside-minded. I'm supposed to become Holy Spirit inside-minded. Most people are Holy Spirit in heaven-minded. No, you're sure He's in heaven. He's right here. Jesus is right there. Yes, Amen. Yes, I'm supposed to be minded like that. Yes, sir, right. See? That's called the renewing of the mind. Yes, sir. It's right there in the 12th chapter of Romans. Yes, now, not to think more highly than I ought to think. I'm not thinking highly of myself when I'm thinking I've been made the righteousness of God. I am thinking by faith according to the Word. That's, that's a fact. That, that's a scriptural fact. See? Same as by His stripes you were healed. That's a scriptural fact. It didn't say you're going to be. It said you were. Well, I need to renew my mind to think like that, that I'm not, I'm not the sick trying to get healed. I'm the healed, and Satan's trying to take my health away from me. That changes everything. You understand? So, how am I supposed to think? I'll tell you, Brother Copeland, I'm so broke I can't pay attention. Well, I know, I've been there. I used to say that all the time. Gloria said she married me in my notes. Well, you don't think I told her I was in debt like that, did you? I had better sense than that. Back in those days, I was a liar. You were too. Only I'm, I'm in it. <laughs> Not funny, really. I don't need to be laughing about it, but I was. And, and, and so, I, the, 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 <laughs> did you know? No, you didn't. <laughs> now say it. I am, I am by, faith, by faith whatever God in His Word says I am. Says I am. Hold that Bible up there. This is my Bible. This is, my Bible. <clears throat> this is God speaking to me. I am whatever it says I am. And I can do by His grace whatever He says I can do. We're totally dependent on the Word of God. Totally dependent on it. Yeah, but I'm broke. <laughs> All right, Galatians chapter 3. Are you born again? Yeah. Then you're not broke. Well, I sure thought I was. That's what you get for thinking <laughs> instead of praying and believing. Galatians chapter 3, are you there? Yes, sir. Yes. Verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone that hangs on the tree, that the blessing... 
Say it. The blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. Now, wait a minute. We were Gentiles, but we're no longer Gentiles. Gentile means without God. That doesn't mean you just weren't born of Jewish parents. It used to in the old covenant, but not in this new one. You were born of Jewish parents. God is your father. Jesus is your blood brother. And the Holy Ghost gave birth to you. Yeah. We're engrafted in. We're no longer Gentile. You, I don't have time to get you there, but you go over there in the second chapter of the book of Ephesians. And it said, remember when you were Gentiles in the flesh? Hallelujah. <laughs> that the blessing of Abraham might come on all the rest of us through Jesus Christ that we might receive the promise of the Spirit, that we might receive what the Spirit promised Abraham. Now he's talking about the blessing of Abraham. Proverbs 10 Oh, glory to God. I don't preach myself smooth, happy. <laughs> Proverbs 10, 22. Are you there? Yeah. The blessing. <laughs> Tracy, you ready for this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The blessing of the Lord. It maketh rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. Well, Brother Copeland, I believe that's just spiritual riches. <laughs> Abraham was a bit more than just spiritually rich. <laughs> right. I got a hold of this. Glory and I. We didn't have, the, the first meeting we preached in Oklahoma City, I didn't have enough, I didn't have enough money to, to buy gas and food. And I just had enough gas to get us to Oklahoma City from Fort Worth. But we're tithers. We got tithing rights. Amen. Glory to God. We got blessing rights. When I first saw this, I was still a student there at Old Roberts University. I got down in Gloria's face. I said, Gloria, listen to this. We're rich now. Glory to God. We're the seed of Abraham. We're rich now, and we're just now finding out about it. This ain't nothing but a matter of time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Well, Brother Copeland, did it work? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. I'm not just spiritually rich. Now, I've been accused of being a wealthy man. I'm guilty. But now the scripture points out, in fact, in the book of Psalms, it said, these are they that are rich in the world. They gather unto themselves. We're not, we're not, that's, that's a different people. Well, you know, Brother Copeland, you know what the scripture says about money? Yeah, I do, but what do you think it says? Well, you know, money's root all evil. No, no. The love of money is the root of all evil. You can commit that sin without a dime. Some of the meanest people in the world ain't got anything. And they're mad at everybody else because they don't. And all the time, they can get in this. 29th verse of Galatians 3, and if you be in Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, you got 
got to love it. Amen. Amen. Do you dare? <laughs> See, faith, faith works for finances, same as it did in the new birth, same as it did. It's part of the blessing Hallelujah. of God. Same as it did in the new birth, same as it did in the Holy Spirit, same as the healing, same things, faith for finances. But you have to go to the scripture to get it. The world don't know anything about it. Most Christians don't know anything about it. Now, <laughs> First Timothy chapter six. Whoa, ho, 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 ho. Verse 17. Put your eyes on it. Second <laughs> Timothy chapter six. Charge them that are rich in this world to get rid of everything you have, you dirty dog. No. Charge them that are rich in this world that they may be not high, that they be not high-minded or trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God. Amen. Who? Who? <laughs> you, yeah, you got nerve enough to believe this. You got faith enough to believe this. I'm going to pick on Jason again here. You ready? Yes, sir. <laughs> Who gives us richly all Thanks. things to enjoy. See, God is not opposed to you having more than enough because he'll supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. He is opposed, violently opposed to you and I being covetous. That'll kill you. Whenever Ken and I talk about living by faith, I know there are people who think, oh, that's easy for you. You're preachers. You have it made. And in some ways we do. But we have it made because our calling demands that we give God our attention. And giving God our attention is what always brings success to us, and it'll always bring success to you in whatever endeavor you're in. But we haven't always lived that way. Right after we got married, we were broke, flat broke, unemployed, deeply in debt, no furniture, no house, no nothing. Then one day, I picked up a Bible that Ken's mother had given him some years before. In the front, she had written this, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things shall be added unto you. Well, I needed a lot of things added unto me. And I began to read that. First time I'd ever written a modern translation that was easier than the King James. So for the first time in my life, I got it into my heart that God cared. I saw where he cared for the birds. I thought, if God cares for birds, he cares for me. I got a revelation. Hallelujah. I was born again, and two weeks later, Ken was born again, and we've been on this wonderful traveling road with Jesus ever since. Don't worry if you don't have it made. We certainly didn't when we started. Just make a decision to seek Him first, and then all these other things the Scripture says will be added unto you. Begin every day from a place of strength and faith. From Faith to Faith, a daily guide to victory by Kenneth and Gloria Copeland has been encouraging believers with the Word in their daily times of devotions. Spiritual, physical, and even financial victories have all been won by applying these time-tested principles to the everyday challenges of life. This daily devotional is filled with 365 messages that will help you start your day off right. Each day includes a daily scripture as well as a practical teaching that will help you apply God's Word to your own life. By feeding your faith each day, it will eventually grow into a faith that can move mountains. The fight of faith isn't won overnight. 
Years ago, the Lord told Gloria, inconsistency lies the power. Let the power of God's word explode inside you, moving you from faith to faith and from victory to victory. Start your day in the word. Request your free TV offer, the daily devotional from Kenneth Copeland Ministries entitled From Faith to Faith. Call 800-600-7395 and receive our most popular daily devotional free. Build your faith in the Word and stay strong spiritually. Request your free TV offer of this daily devotional today. Offer good for 60 days. Be sure to order your copy today. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. Christmas is a very important time of the year. It's a time of year when the whole world is hearing the message of the birth of Jesus. It's a time when people are tender-hearted, the perfect time to plant seeds of love in the lives of those you meet. Keep a sharp eye out for even the smallest chance to assist people. It's amazing how many people are ready to hear what you have to say when you say it in love. They're starved for someone to really care. Be that someone this Christmas season. Spread the word about the peace that's available in Jesus. Who knows how many of those small seeds may one day bring one more precious person into the glorious kingdom of God. Thanks for watching the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Download the broadcast on MP4 or MP3 at kcm.org. Kenneth and Gloria Copeland would like to bless you this Christmas with 25 days of Christmas gifts. Go to kcm.org to download your free gift every day through December 25th. Merry Christmas from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Come to a Kenneth Copeland Ministries event. April 6th through 8th, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland welcome you to the 2017 Branson Victory Campaign at Faith Life Church in Branson, Missouri. June 15th through 17th, join the Copelands at the Dayton Victory Campaign at the Dayton Convention Center in Dayton, Ohio. July 31st through August 5th, join Kenneth and Gloria Copeland and their special guests for the Southwest Believers Convention in Fort Worth, Texas. For more information, go to kcm.org events.